So I went back and looked at the pictures and sure enough, it was broken. It's not like it had been sitting up here and got broken. That's initially what I did was I started to look for the broken piece. I'm like, where did I break this thing? Welcome back to Commonwealth Picker. My name is Kevin and we're in the eBay cave today. Me and Sophie are in the eBay cave. She's been pretty good so far, but I'm sure now that we started the video, she'll start to misbehave a little bit. And we had kind of a crazy day on eBay yesterday, not sales wise, but going back and forth with a buyer that was totally misunderstanding some things, at least in my opinion. And I want to read you something. And this is how I deal with these kind of things. And I, I don't know, I love history, I'm a history teacher, but I kind of like human psychology a little bit, and I try to employ a little bit of that when you're going back and forth with some some buyers on eBay, and sometimes you gotta tell them what they wanna hear, even when what they have said isn't exactly the nicest thing in the world. So this is why I don't let my wife reply to people's comments on eBay, because she wouldn't be near as patient as I would. She doesn't have much patience for fools, I guess. So, at any rate, Sophie, do you have patience for me today? Oh, yeah, you got patience because I'm going to give you a treat. We're also going to tell you what sold today. We had uh, 200 and... Let's see if I can read my own writing. $271.17 out of the Commonwealth Picker Store and $30.54 out of the Homeschool Hustler Store for a grand total of $291.71, which is above what we shoot for every day, but is a little bit less than what we've been getting each day in Q4. We've been at over 400 more times than we're not. All right, so I'll give you a treat, girl, and then we're gonna let these people see what's sold, and I'm gonna read you this real quick before we get going. All right, so first, a little backstory. I reduced this item. This is a happy little accident item, and we've been keeping track of that if you're a viewer to the show, new viewer to the show. And if you're not, you should go back and watch the very first happy little accident, and then we've had a few little updates along the way and see how much we've made on that one yard sale. This was one of the leftover items from the Halloween Department 56 stuff. There was like four items that didn't sell. And this was one of them. And so we're just going to keep them around. I discounted them a little bit to see maybe if they'd sell during the not Halloween season. And I think I sold one. And this one sold. I'm like, sweet. You know, it was, I think we originally had it for like $12.95. Had it marked down to nine bucks. And I was happy to sell it for nine bucks because if I didn't, if I waited for 12 next year, it would sat on that shelf right there for a long time. So I was happy to do it. Anyway, when I went to ship it, I realized that there was a broken piece off of it. Not just a minor broken piece. There's somebody missing. There's somebody who's supposed to be standing right here. This band is supposed to be a four-piece band, apparently. And I noticed it because I ran my fingers across the back, and I could not believe that I possibly had missed this thing. And so, if you can see here, I literally missed a whole figure. His feet are still here. I'm assuming it's a him. And his feet are still here, but there's no figure. And I'm like, oh my gosh. I'm like, I must have, when I listed this, disclosed that. But in my mind, I'm thinking, I wouldn't even have listed it at all, missing a figure. I just wouldn't have listed it. So I went back and looked at the pictures. And sure enough, it was broken. It's not like it had been sitting up here and got broken. That's initially what I did, was I started to look for the broken piece. I'm like, where did I break this thing? You know, we laugh all the time about me dropping stuff. Who knows, maybe I did break it. And so I went back to the picture, and sure enough, it just wasn't ever there. So I could have looked for hours in here and never found it. I went to the description next, just in case I listed it and said there was a broken piece, even though I didn't think I did. And of course I didn't. So this buyer, I, I, I would assume, thought they were getting a full piece like this and didn't look at the picture and didn't see this, because I certainly didn't. And they sent a response. Actually, I sent them a message on the contact buyer. I said, listen... This item is broken. 
I can't remember exactly what I said. I don't remember the initial one. I just look at the replies here. And the initial one, I said something like this. I said, hey, this thing is broken and I don't want to ship it to you broken. I assume you'd rather just cancel the purchase. And so I canceled the purchase and I sent that message. I sent the message first, then I canceled the purchase. And I went to bed and at 1.30 in the morning, I got a message on my phone and I saw, oh my goodness, what's the deal? And this is the person, this is what they wrote to me. They said, since when are you allowed to list an item that you don't have for sale? Uh, I think you just didn't get the price. See, what I did was there's a, a, a choice in eBay when you cancel an item. It says uh, item is out of stock or broken. I think they're combined and that's the one I hit. And so they saw the out of stock thing and it says, since when are you allowed to list an item that you don't have for sale? I think you just didn't get the price you wanted and are refusing to sell it now. You need to make this right or I will pursue I will pursue it with eBay. I'm not allowed to refuse to pay if I realize I'm overpaying. Well, yes, you are. Uh, without getting a ding. That may be true. I'm really upset with this. I'm like, okay. Like, I mean, <laughs> either they didn't read my initial, initial message or they read it and just don't care. So it was a buy it now item. It wasn't a auction item. So I clearly had it listed for the price I was willing to accept anyways. So... Instead of getting upset and, you know, sending something back, I, here's what I sent back. I said, please look at the picture. There is a figure that is completely broken off. I will be happy to send it to you for that price if you want it that way. <laughs> I mean, I would I would be more than happy to send it. For, I'd love to make nine bucks on this thing. You can see where the feet would go, but there is no figure. I didn't realize it when I listed it. If you want it that way, I'll be more than happy to sell it to you and send it to you that way. Otherwise, I will be throwing it in the trash. My apologies. I almost always end with my apologies. It's just something that I do that gets them in a different mindset. It takes any blame or any confusion off of their backs, and it allows them to react in a more reasonable way. And thank goodness this person did react in a reasonable way, and I'm really happy. And I am going to throw this in the garbage because of this broken piece. And that's where it's going to go as soon as we're done right here. But let me read you their response. Their response is, I'm sorry, I did not see your message, and I jumped to conclusions. I am disappointed, but mostly in, my, in myself for reacting the way that I did. Thanks for letting me know. And I, I sent another ba message back, and I said, hey, not your problem. I shouldn't have listed it to begin with. We wouldn't have had this confusion if I hadn't have listed a broken item. item. And that's just a way to simply kind of resolve a matter. I don't know. Maybe it's the teacher in me that, that tries to resolve all the chaotic things that are going on all the time. I'm not quite sure. But at any rate, I thought I'd share that story with you and hopefully get you to sometimes in your initial response, and some people are just unreasonable and we realize that but in your initial response give them a way out even you know and tell them hey if it's your fault it's your fault and it was my fault i could have drop shipped this thing but i couldn't find a comp for it to begin with so i certainly could have drop shipped it from somebody else to them bought another one and shipped it off so i was willing to take the ding i made a mistake and it is what it is you know you sell enough items this thing doesn't hurt you when you when you can't fulfill an order like this all right, Sophie's been okay today, but I think we're gonna say goodbye to her. You gonna say goodbye? All right, everybody, say goodbye, and we're gonna get we're gonna show them what's sold. Okay. All right. Well, enough of that. Let's show you what's sold. This is an old school starter jacket, Virginia Tech. It's got some great color blocking here. It's in pretty darn good shape. I paid five bucks for this at a yard sale in Roanoke, and I was really happy to get it. I love the ones that have the little starter zippers on them, really thick got clean clean velcro right here hook and loop and it's got everything you need to have except for the zipper at the top used to have a hood on it and there's no hood but other than that it's in great shape love it. it's got the starter logo right there so a lot of starter stuff has gone down a little bit in price but if you can find all the good markings you know kind of this has got starter on it in three different places which is really good and it's in pretty good condition it had one issue somewhere and I gave it to Blue Ridge Mama and she got it out. I don't even remember where it was. But this one sold for $40 plus shipping. So it's a nice, probably around a $32 profit on this one. All right, we sold two of the last three 
kind of larger items for Fontanini. And we're about ready to close the books on this consignment with Dirt Road Treasures. And I'm going to let you take a peek today at what we're going to get from it, what they're going to get from it. There's a couple little odds and ends. So it might be a few more dollars, 10, 12 more dollars each, but it's not going to be too much more than that. This is the jewelry shop. And thank goodness it does have styrofoam in it, which makes it a lot easier. Anytime you have these little poles, it's hard. I've shipped them before without the styrofoam, but that one's hard. Anyway, it sold for $31 plus shipping. And so after fees and expenses, we'll each get like 12 bucks, 13 bucks, something like that. All right, this is Authentic Western Young Bloods. I think it's a size medium. And it is, I wonder if it's, this, it's made in Bangladesh. It has the pearl snaps. It's interesting. It's nothing amazing. I picked it up for a couple of bucks and it sold for $15.41. So, you know, you can make seven, eight dollars on these things if you get them with a pretty good price. All right, here is a Hallmark Kitty Car 1939 Moby Horse Sidewalk Cruisers. It's the ornament series of kitty car classics, whatever that means. Anyway, this was part of that huge lot that we got for two bucks, and this one was a good one. This one sold for $14.88. So we're in it for like a quarter, maybe, probably not even that much, more like 10 cents. And so that's a pretty nice little profit on that one, even though it's free shipping. It's going to cost maybe in fees and in shipping and in cost of goods, say six bucks. So it's a nine dollar profit. And this makes me really, really happy. It is the very last string light with Santa and Bumble. Actually, it doesn't have Santa. It has Bumble and Snowflakes and Rudolph. And so it's the very last one and it sold for ten dollars. And we are in this thing for a dollar fifty. So it's not a huge profit, but it's right around $455 in profit, probably more like $450, I guess. And it's the last one, which means we might be able to buy a few more this year. All right, for those of you who are new to the show, you don't remember the garage sale I picked this one up, unless you went back and watched our garage sale playlist, yard sale playlist, garage sale, yard sale, just tomato, tomato, right? And this one came from a sale, I think it was just one sale and we added it onto another video and I think it's the garage sale or the yard sale that makes you want to eat more chicken or something ridiculous like that. We paid a quarter for two different Chick-fil-A shirts and they're brand new in the package and this one sold for 30 bucks. A quarter into 30 bucks. Free shipping, so it's going to cost about 350 or so to ship it, 370 something like that. And it's going to cost about 450 in fees. So seven, we're looking at about a $22, $23 profit. On and that reminds me, I wish if I had it my way, I would just name every garage sale I go to, I'd give it a nickname. And I do with some of them, you know, Happy Little Accident. And there's one that I keep calling Daniel's Big Adventure, and it's not called that at all. It's called like uh, eBay Yard Sailing 101 or something, taking a newbie out. I wish I could give them names, and I suppose I could that remind me of the yard sale so I could tell you which one to go watch because I can't remember the ridiculous titles I do put on there sometimes. I feel like just calling it what it is so that we know which one I'm talking about. And there's one I think that's coming out soon that I'm going to call like the frozen yard sale or something because it was freezing. Literally things were frozen at the yard sale <laughs> and my hands were frozen and there were two, two yard sales back to back and one was even inside and we were freezing to death. And I went to the second one and people were bundled up in their um, hunting gear and it was just crazy. But I still had a good time at both and uh, hopefully that one comes out soon. Maybe it'll be out like a day or two after this video comes out, I think. Somewhere like that. All right, here is the other Fontanini item. and I'm glad to get rid of this one this season. It is heavy as all get out and it is big. This is the Town Gate and it has all the styrofoam in it. And this one sold for $45.95 plus shipping and it did not sell on the discount so i put a discount out there for i think 15 percent on these items and it ran out on friday and then this one went back to full price and then somebody bought it so i'm happy about that and this one's going to go on that consignment sale i'm gonna let you take a look so far at what we've both made all right so far we have just a few items left that i'm not even sure are going to sell we've got three pages of this i put quite a bit of work into this my guess is eight to ten hours worth of work total $419.50 so we're going to add a few more dollars onto that it's going to be somewhere around $425 in the end and I'm going to give them $425 and I've made $425 off of it so let's just say for the sake of argument that I spent nine hours on it that's $50 an hour 
and that's pretty good to me consignment for 50 bucks an hour is worth it any less than that because there's risk involved right there's risk in some of these items breaking there's risk in some of these items coming back and i'm going to pay it out and then assume that assume that risk as we go forward and before we went on and started videotaping this i'm like hey this is like the first day that an enemy hasn't sold in forever and I just had two come across and two sold to a non-viewer. Matter of fact, this is a first time eBayer and they bought two of them and they sold total $25.62 because they bought two. I'm really happy with that sale. If you're a viewer and want one, go to this item in the description below, hit the link, send me a message and I'll send you, send you an offer out for 10 bucks. All right, thought I'd show you the one homeschool hustler sale real quick. Turner's been under the weather, can you tell? Blue Ridge Mama probably wouldn't even like it if he's down here. Look, he's got, he got, what have you been drinking? Um, nothing. Nothing? You got like juice stains on your lip. Oh, that's Gatorade. Gatorade. He's been drinking Gatorade. He's like, you, you gonna put that boy on that thing with Gatorade on his lip? We won't tell her he's on here, huh? Yeah. Don't tell Mama. Yeah. <laughs> you can tell Mama. All right. Turner, tell him what sold out of the Homeschool Hustler store. Um, what was his name again? Gonzo. That's Gonzo. Hold it up. Hold it up. Right there. And he's got the cape and everything. And this this sold to a first time eBayer as well. So this was their first feedback. And this sold for $28.95. And I don't know if it's plus shipping or not. It might be free shipping. Alright? Okay. Tell them goodbye. Bye. So yeah, these are always good to look out for. Gonzo in particular has a pretty good following. And Gonzo has the cape here. I have sold Gonzos like this that are puppets. And I have sold them as golf club head covers. And I've sold them for upwards of $50 before. So I knew when I saw this one it would get probably $25 to $30. And that's exactly what it got. Alright, as we're getting closer to Christmas time, we hope you're having a wonderful holiday season. And thank you so much for tuning in to the Commonwealth Picker channel, as you always do. And we can't wait to see you next time. All right, I forgot to give you an update on the Nirvana Plush sale. So with the sale of Gonzo, we have turned our $156 investment into $483 so far. And we have made a decent amount of sales. So here's one page worth, and here is the other page worth. So we have done pretty good. I'm pretty happy with it so far. We're shooting for in between $1,200 and maybe $1,500.